Hi and welcome to this video on asylum seekers and refugees. We will be joined by our Equality and Culture Special Interest Groups, uh, Mira Bahu, who's the Secretary, and also Gopindaji Kaur, who is part of CQ of Mind. Mira, you've done a lot of work with asylum seekers and refugees, but I think sometimes therapists struggle to understand the difference between two. So can you please tell us a little bit more around um, refugees, who are they, and tell us a bit about refugee status. So refugee is, is about a status. Um, according to the 1951 United Nations Convention, um, it, it is a status that is granted to, to an asylum seeker uh, because they are unable to live in their country anymore. Um, possibilities, there was a war going on or they are unable to stay there because they are being persecuted due to their race, religion or the nationality or membership in a particular group um, or, or, or because of their political opinion. So they cannot live there. Their life is in danger um, and they come out. So they leave and they seek uh, asylum outside of their country. So when they arrive to the host country, they apply for asylum. And if they have been granted the status and that status is called refugee status. So once they have um, gained that status, they are then have rights to health and welfare and social services depending on the policies and resources of the host country. Can you just tell us a little bit more about what is an asylum seeker and what are their rights? In terms of the asylum seekers, um, they don't have any rights in terms of the host country. So they are arriving uh, due to fear of being uh, similar issues, persecuted, and they are applying for a refugee status um, and they are waiting for a refugee status. So while this is happening, they basically, they don't have any rights. They don't have a status and they may not have the rights as a refugee. This means that, for an example, uh, an asylum seeker, they don't have the right to work while they are kind of seeking asylum. So basically, they have less rights. They don't have a status like a refugee or a British citizen. Mira, can you just tell us a little bit more around the needs of asylum seekers and refugees? If you really give some thought, they are arriving to uh, this host country, it's a new country, um, and they have left their homes, family, friends. So um, it's very difficult for them to start a life here. So they basically, they struggle for basic needs. Um, and then in terms of asylum seekers, the life can be really, really difficult because if they cannot have access to public funds or legal or housing, there is a possibility they become homeless and they get exploited and they wouldn't know how to seek support if, if they are suffering from mental health issues. Thank you, Mira. Gopindaji, first, I'd just like to thank you for joining us. Would you mind just telling us a little bit more about Seek Your Mind? and tell us about how we can, as clinicians, work more effectively with asylum seekers and refugees. Hi, Saika. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Gibindajit Kaur, and I am one of the members of the Seek Your Mind charity. Our vision is to work in the community with the community to consider the impact of culture and religion on our mental health. It's important as a clinician working with refugees and asylum seekers that we ask about their journey to this country. Often this journey is difficult and traumatic in itself. When working psychologically with refugees and asylum seekers, we also need to consider that whilst many, we hope, have been given food and shelter, they've had to leave their homes and sometimes even loved ones behind. For me, this brings to mind the idea of place attachment, the emotional bond between a person and a place, and how often these populations of people are seeking a new safe home, a new attachment. And yet we know that these individuals are more likely to experience racism, marginalisation and be re-traumatised by the system. What we know is unfortunately the provision in statutory services is limited and although there may be clinicians with special interests in this work, the majority of service providers are in the third sector or charity organisations. I believe that we need to think creatively and sometimes that means thinking outside of the therapy room 
about the unique needs of this population to remind ourselves that one size doesn't fit all. Thank you to both Gopindaji and Mira for uh, taking time out to help uh, develop this video. And um, as you can see, I think sometimes we get lost in the terminology. We don't fully understand the rights that uh, refugees have and asylum seekers have. So it's important to take time out and actually in your service designs, put some of this work into your service designs where you're liaising with and working with and developing relationships with um, community organisations.